In this video I'm going to demonstrate how Google used fantastic validation and verification techniques when asking users for data to sign up for a Google account. So if you've ever signed up for a Google account before you'll be familiar with this Google form that asks you for things like your name, username, password, date of birth etc. And as I've said Google used some excellent validation techniques to make sure that the data that they're collecting is as accurate as possible. So if we start looking at this form and have a look at the validation that's being used first thing that the, uh, the form asked me for is my first name. So if I click in here and then I decide that I don't want to actually enter anything, that's not good because Google want to know and need to know my name. So if I click out of this field, I'm prompted because of the use of validation that I must not leave this field empty. Now that's the first type of validation that we need to learn about for this course and that type of validation is called a presence check. So making sure that the field actually has some data inside it. So if, for example, I enter Bob, and now I click out of here, you can see that the very, uh, validation error message has disappeared. Again, if I'm in the last name field and I click out of here, I'm prompted again that I cannot leave this field empty because it too has a presence check. So I'm just going to put that our name is Bob Smith. If I go down to the username, we've got some... Um, some interesting types of validation here that we're not going to cover in great detail because again we also have a presence check which we've already talked about but we also have a check that it does um, that we we're not going to talk about too much but if I enter Bob Smith and then click out of here there is actually a validation on here that tells me that someone already has that username so I need to use another one now we don't need to worry about what type of um, validation that is um, we could refer to it as a uh, cross-field check. So it's checking whether in the um, database that exists of these users, whether that one already exists. Um, we could refer to it as a fixed value check again, because it could be doing that. It could be checking that the data um, actually appears somewhere else. But I don't want to complicate things. All we need to be wary of here is that we're referring to this as a presence check. Has it got anything in it? No, it hasn't. Well, then I need to put something in it. So I'm just going to put something um, that hopefully won't already exist. Okay, that will do. I assume no one's got that, which I'm right. Um, and then I'm onto the create a password. Now again, this has got some excellent validation techniques. And the first validation technique um, is actually prompted here in the um, input message, which says use at least eight characters. So if I try and break this validation by just entering three and then click out, click out of it, it says your password is too short. Now this is another type of validation that we need to learn about and this is called a length check. This is checking that the length of the data or the number of characters that I've entered in this field is equivalent to a certain value or within a certain range. So it says I must use at least eight. So if I enter anything less than eight, so seven, and I click out of it, again I'm prompted to say that there's not enough characters. So again, this is a length check. Google also do this fantastic um, validation that we don't need to talk about again, but if I don't use, so if let's say I do use eight characters, but it doesn't like that I've used eight simple characters, it says that this password is too weak. So just for this example, I'm going to make sure I apply the validation techniques that are required, which means I have to have a password, hopefully, that no one will be able to guess. So if I try that, in fact that's a little long because I'll probably forget that, so if I just do this one, okay that's fair, okay. Now then, I don't need to tell you what I've entered in here is the password, but I've entered a variety of numbers, uppercase letters and lowercase letters. Now when I go to confirm my password, this is the first stage at which Google is using verification. So verification is simply a means of checking that the data I entered the first time round is the same when I enter it again. So it's called double data entry verification. It's asking me to enter it once and then just to check that I entered it correctly the first time it's asking me to enter it again. So verification if we want to give a definition means checking that the data being entered into this form matches the source of the data i.e. what I enter here is the same and matches what I've entered here. So. I'm just going to break this rule and see what happens. So I'm just going to enter something completely random. 
that's not the same as my initial password. If I click out of it, it says these passwords don't match. So there's my first example of how Google used verification to make sure that the data they're collecting is uh, as accurate as possible. So if I enter the correct password and then click out of it, everything's fine. Now onto the birthday. The birthday validation by Google here is fantastic. So if I just choose February and let's say I want to start entering um, a date and let's say I enter two digits and then I accidentally click on a third. I don't know if you can hear that but I'm trying to type in a third digit. It's not letting me do it. So straight away it's, it's, um, it's used validation to make sure that I have a certain length of characters in this field. The length validation here is set to two, so it's only letting me add two characters uh, or two digits inside this box. Um, based on what I've just said there, I wonder if it lets me enter any letters in here. Now it does let me enter letters, but when I click out of here, what does it say? There you go. Oh, actually, if I just put a date in here, hmm. So you can see here look, that it doesn't like what I've entered in here. So it's recognized that there is actually something wrong with this field. So it could have been that it's detected a format check or it's, it could have been more likely that at the minute what it's done it, is it's checked a data type validation. So what I mean by that is there's certain data that can be entered in here and the only data that I should be able to enter in here is a number. So they probably applied some sort of validation to check that the data type in here in this field is only ever going to be a number. So if I change that. So just to clarify, we've already established that in here we have a length check and we probably also have a data type check to check that a number is being entered in there. Now another thing that I want to do is if I type in this number In a sense, this number here is valid because there are months in the year that have 31 days. However, this is a brilliant example of some very clever validation that Google do, whereby although that number is valid, if I click out of this cell, it highlights it in red. Now the reason it's done that is, is because it's done something called a cross-field check. That's a different type of validation, a cross-field check. What it's done is it said, okay, this number is two digits, which meets my validation for it must be a certain length. It's a number, which means it meets my validation for a data type. If I've set a range, which means that I've set only the value 0 at 1 to 31 can be entered in here, then this will work. But, for example, if I go to March and have this set to 31, if I just go out of here, is this going to work? Yes. So it's allowed me to have 31 in March because there are 31 days in March. However, if again I change this to February, it detects it detects that February is the month and it's done something called a cross-field check where it says, okay, check the value that's been entered in here and if that value is allowed based on what's been selected in here, then let it be accepted. But because February can only have ever, ever have up to 29 written in this cell, um, in this field, it basically rejects it. So if I type 28 in here, everything should be fine. So we've used a cross-field check. A cross-field check is a validation technique that checks the data in two fields correspond. So it's checked, does this correspond with the month chosen? And it does, because there can be 28 days in February, but they can't be 31 days in February, so it rejects that. So that is a cross-field data validation check. You can see here in the year as well, um, I've also got a length check. It will only let me actually enter uh, four characters. If I take this out, oh, you, oops, I was interrupted by the phone there. So as I was saying, this has got a, um, a length check. It also got a presence check because it says it must have some value entered in there. So. I wonder if I can type in 2014 actually. Ah, I see that's quite good as well though, because there's a range check. It's saying that it can't be after today's or this current year because obviously I can't be born next year if I'm filling this in. So that's quite nice as well. So if I just put 2010. 
Um, the gender, this is another type of validation that we I mentioned previously, but this is a great example of a fixed value check where it's saying, okay, you must choose from a fixed value that I'm giving you. So I will either give you female, male, or other to choose from. So it's a fixed value validation check. Uh, phone number, again, probably got a data type check, uh, a length check, and a presence check. We'll skim over that one. Um, current email address, again, there's got a character check inside here because if I try and enter an email without an at or a dot inside it, it won't let me have it. It says it must include an at symbol. So if I do this, at this.com, it should allow it. So again, here's another great example of whereby even though we might apply validation to this form, it's not always going to mean that we're going to get accurate data. So it's not always going to be 100% accurate because that obviously is just a made up email address. By using validation, we can try our very best to make sure we get valid data but it doesn't always mean we're going to get 100% foolproof data collection. And just to finish, um, what we can do here, or what Google have done here, is another type of verification to make sure that you are a human being that's filling in this form. So it asks us to read this text and type it in here to just verify that we are a human. If you're not sure why it's doing that, basically there are web bots that can go out and create fake accounts by just filling in all these empty fields with valid data. But if I get to a stage where it's asking me to read something on the browser, then web bots aren't very good at interpreting these letters in this, um, in this capture verification. If you want to find out more, if you go to Google and click on this help, it will actually tell you more again uh, about the recapture scheme um, and verification technique that's used. So. In this video, we've talked about validation and verification. We've talked about presence checks. We've talked about range checks. We've talked about uh, data type checks. Talked about cross field checks, fixed value checks. Um, and that's about it. Actually, maybe one more that probably could have been applied to this mobile phone is a format check, which basically means the, the phone number must come with plus 971 um, and then. Uh, Zero five six seven eight nine two three. So it must apply uh, a certain format. You see here, look, the phone number format is not recognised. So it must be a certain format. I assume it's got to look something oh, like. Okay, let me try this. Okay, so that is a valid telephone number uh, in the UAE. So again, an excellent example there of a format check. It must have a certain amount of characters in it. It must start with plus 971 if I'm already in the UAE. And so there's an excellent example there of a format check validation. Okay.